This is the start of my GraphQL JWT authentication series. Now I'm gonna assume you know how to set up a GraphQL server and connect it to a database and say register a user. If you don't already know that, then I'm gonna link below a video that shows you how to do that. So I'm basically going to start from an existing GraphQL server, very simple um, version of it, and then we're gonna add JWT authentication to it. Now in this video, we're not gonna be doing any coding, but I'm gonna be showing you an overview of the method that I would, basically the method that we're gonna use uh, to do refresh tokens and JWTs and how it's all gonna work, uh, just an overall picture. So to start off with, I wanna talk about what we're gonna store in the database because we're gonna add an extra column on our user. And this extra column um, is a count field. Um, you can maybe call it a reset count or a refresh token count, um, something like that. Um, but this is basically the version of the of your token that is live and that people are using. And it's going to be unique per user. Um, this will make more sense in a second, though. And where I wanted to start is how we're going to actually give people tokens. So when someone logs in to our uh, app, they're going to be sending us maybe an email, a password, and we're going to validate that. And if it is valid, we are then gonna send back a token, well actually two tokens, a refresh token and an access token. So both of those are gonna be JWT tokens. The refresh token is gonna to be a long-lived token, meaning you want this to span maybe a week, maybe a month, maybe a year, depends on your application, how long you want to last for. Um, but this is how you know the user is logged in um, and that you wanna make sure stays on the user. Now the access token, this is totally fine. If it uh, expires, goes away, it is short lived and is mainly used to not have to hit the database uh, to see who the user is. So this access token is gonna to be something that lasts maybe 15 minutes or something. Um, and then inside both these tokens, we're going to store uh, the user ID. And then in the refresh token, we're gonna store the current count um, that the user has in the database. So the very beginning, the count's gonna be zero. And so all the uh, refresh tokens that that user logs in, say they log in through the app and they log in through the website, uh, we're gonna have send back the refresh token with a count of zero and its data. Uh, the other thing to note is I'm gonna be implementing this where we send it back as a cookie. Well, really two cookies. So the, on the user's browser, we're gonna store a refresh token cookie and an access token cookie. And then on every request that they send, say they wanna view a profile or something, we can grab both the refresh and access tokens that are gonna be sent up to the server. Um, and we can, without touching the database, we can see the user ID associated with the user making the request based on the information in the token. Now, this is where it gets interesting. What happens when our access token uh, expires? Say it's been 15 minutes or however long we specified. So this is what's gonna happen when we send an expired access token to the server. Um, now, if the refresh token is valid, then we are gonna go about refreshing it. If the refresh token is not valid, say it's been that week, it's been that month or year, uh, then we just say the user's not logged in. We basically treat them as an unauthenticated user. You can either redirect them to log in or do whatever you want with them. Otherwise, we're assuming they have a good refresh token, but an expired access token. So what we're going to do is we're gonna fetch the user from the database, and then we're going to compare the count. So the count that we have stored in the database and the count that is in the refresh token. And if they are equal, that means the refresh token is valid and has not been invalidated. Um, and then we are going to give them a new access token and send that back in a cookie. Um, now the other thing about this is the access token slash refresh token is going to be validated against a secret too because it's a JWT. And so that makes sure that no one else forges tokens or whatnot. All right, so how are we gonna actually invalidate these tokens? Um, so let's say someone resets their password or an account gets hacked. How can we invalidate the sessions or the tokens that we give out to individual users? And this is where that count comes in. So let's say I forget my password, and when that happens, we want to basically log out the user from all the different sessions because they've changed their password or something. Whatever we want the event to be, uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna hit the database and we are going to increment the count um, of this. So what that does is the next time 
any of the user has to refresh their token, um, it's going to see that the count has incremented and is different than the count that is in the refresh token, and it's going to treat that as an invalid token. So basically, that is the method that we're going to be using to invalidate tokens. And this is kind of nice because you can see on each user how many times they have invalidated all their tokens um, as well. And again, this is going to be on a per user basis, the count. Um, so it only invalidates your own tokens. Um, but that's the gist of it. So the other thing to note about this is as soon as we increment the count, um, as long as the access token is valid, we're not going to hit the database and check whether the count has changed. So for 15 minutes or however long you set your access token for, um, the user will still be logged in after, say, they forget their password um, and somewhere else. So that's something to note. So if you want that number to be really small, maybe a minute of delay or a minute of it being invalid information or being cached, um, you can choose how long. But for most websites, most types of applications, say 15 minutes, half an hour or something is a totally fine amount of time uh, for of a delay for the user to check whether the token has been invalidated. Anyway, so that's what's going to happen is they send up their access token, we see it's expired, we go check the database against the count, and we see their refresh token is invalid, uh, and then we say, hey, you need to re-log in. And so that is how the flow of our JWT authentication will work with refresh tokens.